بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ نا ون آف دا موسٹ ویزیبل فیچرس آف دا مسلمس از دا حجاب یہ از دا بیئرڈ ٹو سم ایکسٹینڈ بٹ ایون نان مسلمس دے ڈو ہیو دا بیئرڈ بیکاز آف کلچر اینڈ بیکاز آف فیشن اینڈ ڈفرینٹ ریزنس بٹ دا حجاب دا وے اوور سسٹرس ویئر اٹ اٹس کوائٹ یونیک ہاؤ ایور وین دا نان مسلمس وین دا لک ایٹ دا حجاب مسلم ویمین دے ہیو دا پرسیپشن دیٹ بیکاز آف دا حجاب دا لیڈی دا مسلم لیڈی شی از اپریس شی از سبجیگیٹیڈ شی ڈزنٹ ہیو اے وائس نو فریڈمس نو آئیڈینٹی دیٹس دا پرسیپشن دیٹ دے ہیو وین اٹ کمس ٹو حجاب سو واٹ از اوور ریسپانسبلٹی اللہ سبان و تعالیٰ ہیز گیون دا ریسپانسبلٹی آف شیئرنگ دا میسج آف اسلام سو ہاؤ ڈو بی ایکسپلین ٹو نان مسلم بردرس اینڈ سسٹرس دیٹ واٹ از دا حجاب واٹ از دا کانسیپٹ واٹ آر دا بینیفٹس آف حجاب سو ان دس ویڈیو ان شاء اللہ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو گو اوور what points can be shared how do we remember it what sequence we should have now if i ask you this question what comes to your mind when you think of hijab i mean for me what comes to my mind is modesty so the word modesty let's take the word modesty and every single letter of the word modesty inshallah will become one point m o d e s t n y Now, it's not easy to write and to speak. I have seen that in the last video. Okay, here is a bonus for each single one of you. If you stick around until the end of the video, there's a special surprise, a special prize for all of you. Inshallah. So let's go over the word modesty. So the very first letter is the letter M. So when I have to explain what hijab is to a non-Muslim person, I would say that our maker, our creator, the maker of the whole universe who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom in his guidance and the love of humanity he gave us the guidance of the hijab and the concept of modesty so humanity we can live in chastity and harmony and peace with all so it's the maker who ordered O stands for ordered in the Quran So there are two places, at least that I know in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning specially to the, to the Muslim ladies that they, they should properly cover themselves. Surah Noor, Ayah 30 and 31, means chapter 24, verse number 30, and verse number 31. And chapter 33 of the Quran, verse number 59, Surah Ahzab. So it's an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should say to the non-Muslim brothers and sisters that the, our Muslim sisters are not wearing the hijab because of the culture, because of the parents, because of the father and the son and the uncle and the brother. They're wearing it because they want to obey the creator, the maker of the universe. The third important aspect of hijab that I mentioned to them, that it is like a dress code. So we give the analogy. The writing is legible because in my last video, someone wrote a comment. Dr. Sabeel, your writing is like the writing of a doctor. So under D, I give them the analogy that just like when someone goes to school, there is a dress code. When someone goes to a college, a work, there is a dress code. When someone goes to a restaurant, there is a dress code. No shirt, no shoes. Nowadays, no mask, no service. So hijab is like a dress code that our creator has given to all of humanity so we can live in justice and chastity and with harmony. Important for us to know that under E, that this is for every person, everyone. So the concept of modesty is not only for the Muslim ladies, Muslim sisters. Concept of modesty is for every single person. For example, me as a Muslim male and you, the brothers who are watching there, you also and me also, we cannot wear tight clothes. We cannot wear transparent clothes. We cannot wear clothes of the opposite gender. We cannot wear uh, extravagant clothes to just waste money. We cannot wear clothes that represent people of other faiths. For example, no crosses and no darts, things like that. And we have to cover certain parts of the body. So the concept of modesty, what we wear, what we should not wear, is equally for both males and females. The concept of modesty is not limited to what we wear. So we should say to the non-Muslims, it is not just what we wear. Concept of modesty is a state of mind. Modesty of our tongue. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, that say something good or remain silent. 
modesty of the tongue modesty of our eyes in surah nur allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the muslim males that lower your gaze and guard your modesty it is better for you in the eyes of allah so the concept of modesty is a holistic term it's a state of mind it is both for males and for females so it's for every person s stands for the statistics what do i mean by it when we look into the statistics in the usa unfortunately 433000 plus assaults and rapes they happen each single year and these are the only reported ones in the usa similar same situation in australia and europe russia china japan south america almost all over the world however when you compare the statistics from a non muslim country to a muslim country the number of assaults and the rapes in the muslim country they are far less I'm not saying that they don't happen. I'm not saying that let's blame the victims. No. What I'm saying is the concept of modesty, alhamdulillah, is still present in the Muslim societies. Even then, some of these assaults, they do happen. We blame those individuals. They're not doing those assaults because they're Muslims. They're doing those assaults because they're Muslims, but they're not following Islam. Important. So the common denominator, when we look into the statistics, of all the non-Muslim countries is that they have a really relaxed dress code. Anyone can wear anything, doesn't matter, immodest, modest, anyone can wear anything. However, in the Islamic country, the Muslim countries, right, not Islamic, in the Muslim countries, the common denominator is that people still have their decency and the modesty and the haya, as we say. So, and that is reflected in the statistics. So S is for statistics and T stands for the testaments. Testaments, right? What do I mean by it? I mean the Old Testament and I mean the New Testament and other scriptures. So the concept of hijab is not just only for the Muslims in the Quran. It is also present in the older scriptures, the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, one day we had a delegation of Amish people coming to the MCC Masjid. When they called us that they want to come, we were standing outside the masjid to greet them and we were hoping that they would be coming by horses and carriages. No, they came by a yellow school bus. And the distinction when they came in is that all the ladies, they were properly covering themselves. So in the Q&A session, I asked them the question, the ladies, you guys are covering yourself, why? And they said it is there in the Bible for them to cover. And lo and behold, if you look into the New Testament, in the first Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 5 and 6 it says addressing to the ladies any woman who prays or prophesies it is a dishonor for her if she leaves her head uncovered then verse number 6 continues she it is an order for her it's a commandment for her that she has to cover her head so the concept of hijab is there they're not doing it that's a different story even in the old testament for the jewish ladies they are supposed to cover themselves, not show their hair, especially when they get married. That Mary, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon her, when the Christians, when they do her depictions, especially the Catholics, she's properly covering herself like a Muslim lady because she was a Muslim lady, right? She was praying to Allah, one God, no trinity, no mediator, direct worshipping the creator. Even the Catholic nuns, Mother Teresa, they all used to properly cover themselves. So in the Old Testament, New Testament, the concept of hijab, modesty is still there. They're not doing it. Muslims are doing it, alhamdulillah. And Y stands for you and the society. You and the society, if all of us, if we follow the concept of modesty, yourself, your family, your society, all of humanity, inshallah, God willing, it would be a chaste society, a harmonious society. People are going to respect each other. Doesn't matter what gender that they are, males or females. There would be empowerment, yes. That Muslim ladies, once they are wearing the hijab, alhamdulillah, they feel empowered, they feel strengthened. They're not, they're not following the culture of any society, the Hollywood norms. They are following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now they're free to be judged, not by the shapes of the body, not by you know, their makeup, not by their hair. They are to be judged by their intellect. 
they are to be judged by their personality, their, their religiosity, their closeness to Allah, their taqwa. That's how they should be judged. Alhamdulillah, empowered by the hijab, empowered by the rights that Islam, Quran, Allah has given to Muslim ladies, they achieved humongous impact in the society. For example, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was the greatest scholar of her time. Even the older companions, they used to come and they used to ask her questions and study under her. The oldest continuous university, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, it was made by a Muslim sister. Her name was Fatima Al-Fahri. Wearing the hijab, she laid the foundation of the continu oldest continuous campus in the whole world. Older than Oxford, and Cambridge and Harvard. Any campus, this was the oldest continuous. Made by a Muslim lady adhering to the concept of modesty. Even now today, they are in many fields, mashallah, all fields, our Muslim sisters, as attorneys, as physicians, IT professionals, as teachers and scholars. Yes, they're doing it, wearing the hijab, adhering to the modesty. So this is the concept of hijab, the concept of modesty. If our non-Muslim sisters, inshallah, if they look into it and they are looking into it, Alhamdulillah, in the USA, when people are finding out the freedoms and the empowerment and the excellent guidance Islam has given, the Quran has given to them. Alhamdulillah, in the USA, close to 15,000 non-Muslim sisters of their own choice, they are proclaiming La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Those of you who waited until the end of the video, here is your price. Our Muslim Ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, had made us the best Muslim Ummah of all the Ummahs. The Ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I love the Ummah so much. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, in chapter number 3, verse number 110. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas ta'muruna bil marufi wa tanhawna anin munkar wa tu'minuna billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you are the best of ummah created for humanity. You enjoy good, you forbid evil, and you believe in Allah. So I love the Muslim ummah so much. Here is my gift to the Muslim ummah. Alhamdulillah. This is a gift to all of you. Jazakallah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala empower us and he make us ambassadors of Islam. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.